All right. Welcome back, everybody. This lesson, we're going to be talking about what a rational number is and how we can convert one type of rational numbers, fractions, into decimals, another type. So what is a rational number? Well, a rational number is simply any number that can be written as a fraction. Maybe it already is a fraction, and that's the easiest type of rational number to see, which would be like two thirds, right? Well, that's a number that can be written as a fraction, obviously. That's a rational number. Um, but it could also be um, <clears throat> an integer, like seven or negative five. Both of these are rational numbers because they can be written as a fraction, right? There's always an invisible one underneath any integer, right? And so there's always a fraction version of every integer. And last but not least, we have decimals. So we have something like this, right? Seven tenths. And even as I say that, I hope you can hear that that's a fraction. Seven tenths. How do I write seven tenths as a fraction? Well, I write seven tenths. So all of these are different types of rational numbers. So we are including all the integers, all the fractions, and then all these decimals. Okay. So let's talk about how to convert from fractions to decimals because every fraction can be written as a decimal. There's a few that we know off the top of our head. For example, most people know that one half equals 0 0.5 or 5 tenths. That's just a a decimal that we know is a half, and one quarter is 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths. But <clears throat> there are lots of fractions that, you know, maybe I give you one like two sevenths. You're know, like, I don't know how to write that as a decimal. Well, you're about to learn how. And the way we do it is by using division. Remember, every fraction, like two sevenths, is also a division problem, like two divided by seven. And so we're actually going to do that division problem to figure out what the decimal version is. But we're not going to start with one that hard. We're going to start with one a little easier. In fact, we're going to start with one we already did, one fourth. We already know the answer to this one. So now I'm just going to show you how to get it. So one fourth, the fraction, is also the division problem, one divided by four. So let's do that. And we're using long division here. OK, so um, I put one inside here, and I put four outside here. How many times does four go into one? Well, it doesn't. It can't fit into one. It goes in zero times. So I place a zero right there, OK? So um, we're not done, of course. We place a little decimal here, and we start adding zeros after the decimal. Notice a decimal goes under the division sign and above it. Now we do four going into 10. How many times does four go into 10? Well, it goes in two times. Two times four is eight. I subtract 10 minus eight is two. I have a remainder, so I bring down another zero. So I bring that down here. How many times does four go into 20? Well, it goes in five times because five times four is 20. I subtract, I don't have a remainder. That means I'm done. That means the answer is right here, 0 0.25, which we already knew from the last slide, but at least now you can see why. Because if I actually do one divided by four, I get 0 0.25. So let's look at one that's a little bit more complicated, 5 sixths. So this is the same as 5 divided by 6. So let's set that up, shall we? How many times does 6 go into 5? Well, it doesn't. I put my decimals, I add another zero, and I think how many times does six go into 50? Well, it goes in eight times because eight times six is 48, and that's almost 50 without going over. I subtract and I get a two. I have a remainder, so I need to keep going. I add a zero, I bring it down. How many times does six go into 20? It goes in three times. Three times six is 18. I subtract and I get two. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna have to bring down another zero then. I guess I'm gonna extend this out, bring down another zero. How many times does six go into 20? Well, it goes in three times. We already did that problem. Three times six is 18. And I subtract and I get another two. 
and you realize, oh my gosh, if I bring this zero down and I do it again, I'm gonna get three up here again, and this is never gonna stop. In fact, that's right. It's going to keep repeating on and on forever. And as it repeats, the threes will keep repeating on and on forever. So I don't wanna sit here and keep writing threes forever. So instead I write 0 0.83, and then I put a little bar over the three, just over the three, because that's the only part that's repeating. And that just says that it's eight in the tens place and then three in the hundreds, three in the thousands and on and on and on and on and on threes forever. Okay, let's look at one more example, this time for a fraction that is greater than one. So we have nine fourths here. All right, so this would be the same as nine divided by four. So let's set that up like so. Okay, how many times does four go into nine? Well, it goes in two times. Two times four is eight. I subtract and I get a one. And now I have a remainder, so I need to drop my decimals down and bring down a zero. How many times does four go into 10? It goes in two times. Two times four is eight. I subtract and I get a remainder of two, so I need to bring down another zero. How many times does four go into 20? That goes in five times. Five times four is 20. And I subtract and get zero. So I'm actually done here. So my answer is 2.25 or two and a quarter, which is the same thing as nine quarters, nine quarters, nine fourths is two and a fourth or two and one quarter. All right. Hope this helped.